Hello fellow Kerbinops, this is S.A.R. Mortinian, here's another episode of CASA. Today, oh man, where did I put this last time? Uh, we're going to try and go out to, um, to Duna. We're going to use the same, well not the same ship, a very similar ship to um, the EVE Science ship. The difference is, I'm not sure if uh, you can't really see it. The point is there's a thermometer right there and there is a barometer, I think, on the other side. There's two additional scientific devices that I have added to this to make it more usable. Yes, that's right. Usability is my middle name. It's not. I'm, I'm a dirty liar. Don't listen to me. Children are a bad example. Anyway, um, so I theorized that I could probably get to Duna with the same ship if I was just a little bit more careful. So I'm just gonna be a little bit more careful. That seems reasonable to me. Does that not seem reasonable to you, Internet? It seems reasonable to me. If it won't work, I'm going to attach more boosters to the sides here to give this first stage a little bit of oomph. A little bit of oomph that it didn't have before. Alright. Let's move this bad boy. Start getting them turned sideways. If I recall correctly, Duna is on plane with Kerbin, so I don't have to do any weird adjustments, or at least I shouldn't have to do any weird adjustments, I guess I should say. Okay, it's past the... Drop those. That looks good. <clears throat> Burn for a ways up this way. See where that gets us. Right now, it's going to be pretty shallow. Yeah. I just have to get it up to 70k. So, yeah, I mean, you know, not bad. Uh, we'll see how this works. We'll see how it works. I think there's a good chance that I can make it all the way with this design. I don't think it's the best chance, but you know, it's it's certainly not bad. So go ahead and Well, let's see how we're doing on fuel. I should just really keep this resource tab up, shouldn't I? Hmm. Go ahead and kill it there. I'm going to go ahead and time accelerate. there. I'm going to go ahead and just start burning again. The idea here, of course, is to keep the time to apoapse at um, just a scotch ahead, basically, of where I am. How close is my fuel? Okay. I'm going to have to get in here because I'm going to have to stage, and good to go. No mistakes like last time. Now I'm going to start burning totally parallel. Six, five, four, three, two, one. There we go. Circularized orbit. Look at that. 87, 74, not perfect, but certainly not bad. I've got that much fuel left. 
I think I can make it to Duna with that. What do you guys think? All right, so Duna is on plane with Kerbin. Good to know. Now I'm going to want to get a solid acceleration, increasing the speed as I leave Kerbin's sphere of influence. So I'm going to burn this way. There we are. Gets me almost there. Now the trick with uh, that's not bad at all. Look at that. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. That's an intersection. So now the question is, can I actually perform this burn? The idea is hopefully yes. I've managed to stay nice and on plane, so I don't have to make any corrections. I was very, very careful to do that this time. I'm much more careful than I've been in the past because my margins have always been pretty high. So I was like, eh, whatever. But unfortunately, that last EVE mission, as I was coming in towards the atmosphere, taught me <coughs> I'm starting to run into uh, issues with my margins. So I run into a lot of issues with my margins. So I've been a pretty big fan of just not doing anything that I feel is going to require additional delta V, for instance, a significant um, angular difference, significant ascending versus descending node difference on my uh, last flight there is going to require me to um, well, it's going to require me to make some pretty significant changes. Let's just let's just leave it at that. All right, 40 seconds, 30 seconds, 20 seconds. Most important thing is keep it on plane. All righty. Burn, burn, burn. Yes, yes, yes. Oop. Overdid it by a little bit. Where am I? Okay. If I get rid of that, where am I? Okay, I need to... Retract a little bit. Okay, that's a real point. I can deal with this. We're going to accelerate out so that we're in actual interstellar space. So right now I'm still barely in the Kerbin system. There we are. I've got my intersection to set up. All right. I'm going to turn myself. Yep. All right. Very, very slowly it's gone. What am I doing? What am I moving it that way for? Oh, well. Just time accelerate break. Start moving back. I'm going to burn a little bit forward because I think that's what we're missing. I think it's just a little bit shy of being in. Yes, it's so shy. So I'm going to give it Maybe just five, six meters per second and get to that point. And then run through a few orbits until we're getting close and see what kind of change I'm going to have to make. And hopefully it'll be less than 400. It's a nice little quick little spurt. <clears throat> Where ideally I'll be able to hit the planet with a very, very wide um, intercept. So I won't have to burn very much when I'm there. I can, I can alternatively set that up, of course, but... We will see what happens. And break. Okay. 
There it is. There's my intersection. So now we are going to... I'm, I'm going to actually probably, I think, put this one all the way up filmed <coughs> on YouTube, unlike the Eve mission that I um, let go for a little while, because uh, that... That video ended up being only about 20 minutes, which, um, while some people may have enjoyed it, I like to put up some significant content in my videos, and I don't really have a plan for another mission uh, after this one to Duna. So, you know, problems. Okay, so basically, once I get to this intersection, I'm going to slow down, and I'm going to see what kind of uh, what kind what what the next intersection is going to be like and I'm going to try and trim it if I can and okay, I can probably go a little bit faster than that it's a trick with interstellar you end up uh, moving a lot slower than you think you are Okay, so that's the next intersection. Where am I going to hit? I'm going to hit there. Really? Why would it be there? This will be... Oh, I see. Okay, so I'm going to need to do one more revolution. And then that will bring it in pretty close, I would say. I might need to do two. And the only reason that I would do two is if that one brings it in pretty close, I'll... Um, <coughs> I'll trim it up so that it doesn't lose as much the next time, and I'll be a nice on a uh, relatively similar velocity to Duna, as opposed to this vastly different velocity at this point, as you can see. I'm going to be, uh, right here, I'm going to be traveling much slower than Duna, because if I was traveling at the speed, I would be in this orbit as opposed to this one. Right here, I'm traveling, at, the, at my periaps, I'm traveling at about the speed of Kerbin, which is substantially faster with respect to Kerbal. That is the issue, isn't it? Ah, space flight. Okay, I believe it doesn't cross. It doesn't deal with it until I cross that point. I am moving at max. Ugh. This is all I can do for you, Internet. Well, I could speed up the video and give it post commentary, but that's a lot of work. I'm not professional, and besides, you love listening to me talk. I can tell. That's why you're. What is this episode nine of Kerbal? <clears throat> Casa here? If you're on episode 9, you clearly love listening to me talk. And I can't blame you. No, I'm kidding. Um, I'm sorry to torture you with my speaking all the time, but it's uh, it's how you pass the time. That's a phone. I'm going to ignore that unless it's incredibly important. It's not. Alright. Do, 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 do. Getting close. Slowing it down. Okay, perhaps not that slow. Perhaps not even that slow. Man, we really are just chugging out here, aren't we? Oh, only 6,000 meters per second. Yep, yep, that's, uh, that's chugging all right. And there we are. Yeah, see, that's, that's a lot closer. I feel like I can trim that up. I send this text telling the person that just called me that I do, in fact, still love them. And then I'll call them later does not want to send. Alright, so we in regular time? Yes. I am slowly accelerating. What I need to do is the maneuver node and I can't do that for whatever we okay. There's my node. Let's see about what I'm looking at to fix this. Why is it making it go farther away? 
Oh, is that? Oh, I'm a dumb dumb. This is ahead of me in the closer I get. Okay, well. Uh. Alternatively, it looks like we're just going to have to go around another time. And then once we do, it will be the, the supposed intersection will be behind me, and then I can trim that up closer. That's that's how it's going to work. I was thinking about that wrong, and I just wasted a lot of time. But it's fine because I'm an engineer. Also, I wasted no time for the Kerbals, so they're they're a happy bunch. <coughs> Uh, zooming around the Kerbal system. There have been uh, mods suggested that would, you know, add additional star systems, like, you know, out a bit, like over here. I think it'd be interesting. I think it'd be uh, nigh impossible to get there, but very interesting. We'd have to invent new engines that uh, people would have to mod out to be at the end of the tech trees that would be um, effectively warp drives that would allow us to get out there. As they say, we don't have the technology now, but blah, 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 this, that, the other. Oh, look at that. Currently, my velocity vector is pointed straight towards um, Duna. It knows, it knows exactly where we want to go. We're just going too slowly. It's the only problem. Shimon. Shimon. Hee hee, Michael Jackson flying the Kerbal. I don't know what that was about. I'm filming this on Thanksgiving. Um, a lot of these videos are going to be getting up, you know, late compared to when they're actually a thing. Okay, so this is kind of annoying. I've started the ship spinning. It was facing away. As you can see, I don't know why it did that. It shouldn't have, but it did. So it's going to spin really slowly now. All the way over until it starts getting sunlight, and then I can start getting electric charge out of it. I noticed that in advance that, that was going to happen and be a problem. But luckily we have two days until I need to do my next calculation, so we have the time to rotate the ship with the 0.2 electric charges I use. This is where in the future uh, there's a there's a a tool, the, a part, that's what I'm looking for, called an RTG. It's a, a nuclear engine, I guess you could say. It's not, but it's not an engine. It's a nuclear reactor, a power reactor that you can attach to the ship, which provides a constant electrical charge. That's really good for these long deep space flights when you have directional solar panels, like I do. Um, because I'm really special. Okay, I'm getting plenty of charge now, so I'm going to go ahead and accelerate. Back up to full. Happy days. Happy days are here again! And just so I can get up to my point and see what's going on. Oh, look! Kerbin is actually pretty close. Not doing bad at all. Alright. Let's get past it. I'm past it now. Okay, there it is. All right. So I need to trim that up. I've got to turn off the SAS, first of all. I need to burn prograde until this lines up with this. What that's going to mean is that I'm going to have very little actual work to do when it comes to um, once I'm actually in an intersect with the planet. It'll be very minimal. Okay, there's that. Now I'm going to burn. And you can see I'm slowly but surely bringing in that intersection node. Come on, buddy. I have to go hardcore on this, am I? Alright. I'll do it. 
coming in, coming in, coming in. Don't want to miss this moment. Look at that. That is a long intersection. <clears throat> that is... Oh, it's because I'm most... Yeah, this is going to be nice and easy. I've got plenty of fuel. I think we're actually going to be able to get the same ship design out to both Eve and Duna, which is very impressive to me. Lots of science is going to be gathered from this one ship design. Alright, so it's going to take one more evolution. And here's what I'm going to do this time. Because it was an issue last time with that power, I'm not going to let it be an issue. I'm going to get this ship so that it faces in a direction that when we're in this section of the orbit should be very, very close to head-on with a star at the center of our Kerbal system here, the star Kerbal. That's K-E-R-B-O-L, for those of you who aren't familiar with that. Don't know if I've mentioned it or not in the past. Regardless, here we are, and stopping. Now we can time accelerate. We will slowly revolve about it, and when we're on the other side of the orbit, and, you know, not in contact with Duna at all, um, we, we will be facing away from it, but it'll be fine. It'll be good. All right, what do we got going on here? What do we got? I forgot to delete that. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, for those of you who might not remember the last episode, this Kutnik ship used to be a piece of debris floating around uh, Kerbin, and then somehow it magically decided that it was going to be um, floating in the stellar neighborhood just suddenly for no good reason honestly. And I found that very weird, so. What I really like about this intersection here is that um, once it's done, if you look up here, the orbit, the adjusted orbit, is basically Duna's orbit. I feel like, let's just say, you know, we weren't going to intersect with it. Um, we weren't, we weren't going to try and land, we were just going to let it hit and see what happens, that, um, we we would actually be fine. Like it, it would not be an issue. It's, I'm trying to say a lot of things when it's not going well. Don't worry about it. It's fine. All right. So Duna has an atmosphere as well, by the way, like Eve, which is why I'm able to use this ship design to land on it. None of the moons do, so I'm not gonna be able to do that. Uh, Duna, however, does have a light enough atmosphere that, in theory. When I make the ship that gets to uh, Gilly and back, I might be able to make it with big enough margins that I could get it to one of the moons, or uh, to, to A, the moons about Duna, and also to Duna itself. I might be able to get on and off with the Kerbal, get some core samples, which would be amazing science. Eve's still a little bit beyond us, though. Okay. Here we are, coming up on our cur not cur uh, Duna orbit. I'm interested to see how this is going to go. One thing I will cut out in this video is when I just sit there and do research for a while, because I know that's not interesting. Oh, gosh. Okay, well, I'm going to edit a bit of that out. Basically, what happened there is I clicked out of the screen again. It's my favorite thing. I really need to just start moving my... Um, my second screen to a place is very difficult for me to click out of when I'm going to film these curl missions because these breaks or the game crashes because I clicked out of screen is really annoying. Uh, regardless, I'm going to go for making this burn the second time. And, oh. For me, this is good enough, especially because I want to kind of move it into a better plane to land on. So, I'm just going to go ahead and do it this way. Maybe we're going to burn a little bit this way and see what happens. Ninety-five thousand. And... That'll be okay. Alright, so... 
here in 17 hours. How much fuel do I have left? A moderate amount. I'm going to burn it down. This planet's atmosphere is not thick enough for me to rely on just a straight fall. So I'm not going to. 67, 140. All right, I can do that, and then I'll try and land on this side of the planet. It's only 300 meters per second. It's going to move in that direction now. This is the moon, by the way. Ike, that's what it was called. The moon about Duna, Ike. Much bigger than Gilly. Um, <clears throat> much more stable circular orbit about the planet. Unlike Gilly, which, as you may have seen from the EVE mission, is incredibly centric about EVE. There's my target. Come here, Skippy. Come on. Come on, baby. Don't die on me. I love you too much for that. I'm right, gonna go ahead and do a little break. And I'm gonna move down towards it. Come on. Come on! Come on! That's close enough. Alright. Sorry. Oh god, that was a mistake. Alright. I almost accelerated way too fast. I don't want to miss this. Not because it would be too big. Of, yeah, I'm not even in the path of Ike, but I have had times when I was playing in sandbox mode before I started this series where I would um, come in and do some sort of maneuver and you know go around the planet again, but then I would inter intersect with Ike because Ike actually has a relatively large sphere of influence compared to Duna because, as you can see, they are it's relatively large compared to Duna. Um, it's very, very dangerous. It's also rather close to the planet and relatively large. In the real world, this would actually, I feel anyway, be big enough to cause some sort of wiggle in the planet. Just a little bit, you know, nothing extravagant, but it would certainly cause problems, shall we say. All right, all right. And, uh, 25 minutes. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Oh, oh, because I'm crossing the North Pole. My God, that was terrifying. Okay, I saw the nav ball flip around like a madman. Oh, oh, I missed it. That's fine. Good enough. I'm gonna burn this way because I want to try and rotate the. situation a little bit. A little nice. I seem to be rotating it the wrong way. Uh, it's not. I'm not going to make any significant progress. Okay. So I'm just going to burn. Burn, burn, burn until I get it down to be about that kind of a thing. Okay, got plenty of fuel left. So here's what we do. Don't need this node anymore. We're going to try and land on this side of the planet that has a little bit of sun left. Alternatively, we could try and land on this side of the planet. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's just go for it. All right. We're doing it live. Doing it live. I'm try a relatively shallow approach. Good enough for government work, as they say. Okay. Now we are actually going to, well, I mean, do it live, as I said. I'm no liar, ladies and gentlemen. Rotate, 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 rotate. All right, come on, come on, come on. So what I'm going to do here is actually 
add those parachutes into the next stage, wait until we hit the atmosphere, and then I'm going to burn the rest of um, the fuel to try and slow this down enough as soon as we start seeing some significant stuff, and then I will um, watch him and who's it. Come on, brain. You got this. Then I'll pop the parachutes when it separates so that the pod just flies right off of it, ideally. <clears throat> Not much trouble is had. I'm, I'm still very impressed that this design is going to manage to land all the way on Duna. Even though it was designed for EVE, which is much easier to get to. I'm very excited for that. I, I flew this much more efficiently, and that just proves... It, it shows to, or goes to show that if you fly like a nutcase, you lose a lot of efficiency. I don't know what the difference in Delta V is between EVE and Duna, but I mean, these are the same kind. I actually have better margins, quite frankly. I got to burn more in relation to Duna. All right, here's the atmosphere. So I'm going to wait until the atmosphere is relatively thick before I do any of these crazy things that I've been intending to do. Which does happen pretty low. As you can see, we're at 30,000 and the atmosphere is only just now starting to kind of climb up. It's it's pretty sketch. It's pretty sketch, guys. Okay, 20,000. Getting really uncomfortable now. All right. Gonna slow us down a bit here. Then drop the parachutes. There they are. Hopefully that provides enough drag. Because we are still going down pretty hard. Pretty soon though, they should balloon out. I hope, I pray to God that this does not explode this close. Okay, there we are. And it managed to not rip the device apart. I am very happy about that. All right. There's a lot of Delta V to slow for this um, pod very, very quickly there. And I think that we would have been in a pretty bad situation. So where are we going to land? It looks like we're going to actually kind of, kind of land in a valley on Duna here. Which means we'll have less sun exposure per day, but that's okay. That's fine. All right. Now I'm, I'm comfortable time accelerating a bit. Oh, there's the ground. Hey there, buddy. How's it going? Well, I'm glad it survived. And there's that. So, um, oh, I didn't do any signs in the atmosphere while we were falling. Uh, I'm not going to get as much. Oh, well, that's fine. Can I do science with the, I can log the temperature. Look at that, 64. I'm going to ship that data off. I might get more data just because I'm able to log this kind of data. Uh, regardless, I'll run each of these just so you can kind of... Oh, well, that's a second mystery view. Still getting 80 out of it. I'll observe the materials bay. How much do I get? 200. All right. So, yeah, now you've seen all of the research that we can do on Duna. And I'll uh, pick it back up when I'm done with the research and back at the station. I just want to take a minute to show you guys, uh, before we go back to the station, the brightness and the red planet Duna during the day. It's very nice. You also want you to notice that I only get two units of electrical charge at near high noon. Um, unlike on Eve where I was getting, God, 10, 15. It was beautiful. And here I'm getting not so much. So that took me a lot longer. But hopefully we got a <coughs> comparable amount of data considering that I did not do any science in the space around Duna. There's actually still quite a bit to be done there. And I think I could send a probe... Um, out here again to do similar work. 
and would be able to do quite a bit. But I may wait until I actually send a carbonaut out here to do that. So we'll we'll see how that goes. Anyway, let's go back to the space center. <coughs> I'm throttled up. I'm throttled up. So I am. Now I'm not. And space center it is. <coughs> Don't want to lose that data that we collected. All right. Where are we science-wise? How much did I earn? I actually spent a little bit from last time. We're still at 700. Oh, man. Beautiful. All right. So, I want to get that nuclear rocket for interstellar travel so we have a much better specific impulse. We have a much better efficiency. In our, what, what is this? Oh, I can't tell. Anyway, definitely want to pick up that. Uh, how do I get this? I, I need it. I want it. I think it's going to be this one. Oh, yeah, because these are all wider and can fit on parts that are going to come in that. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get it now. But it's unlocked. Yay. See, these are the things that I want. I need 550. So, oh, look. And there's the uh, docking node so I don't have to build my own. A lot of stack adapters. Oh, man, those would be helpful. Oh, goodness. All right, well, those are things I want to get in the future. What's this? How much does it cost? It costs 160. I'm actually going to need this as we're moving on here in order to get access to a lot of these. Uh, like on Gilly, for instance, I'm going to want really small rockets. I don't want these gigantic uh, things. I'm going to want something like these radials, the radial rocket maxes. Um, much more valuable. So can I get there? No, because I only have 121. Uh, well, let's do this. Let's do this. <clears throat> I can very easily... Where am I? Where were we? I can just do the Duna mission, because it's more thorough. And we're just going to launch this on Kerbin somewhere that uh, that we haven't done research at before. Let's see. I don't think... Well, no, I have flown... I flew to the pole once out of video to get some information. But I haven't been in the desert. So we're going to go to the desert. Because we're going to fly west. That's fine. We've, I mean, we've definitely got the margins for it. So... Let's do it. Oh, God. Uh, and we're okay, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, gosh. Are we? Yes, we're fine. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to fly west, as it turns out. All right. We're going to do some science in this desert right here. Let's see what happens. This is just going to be a longer episode because I really want those tiny little rockets so we can do science. Wait a minute, am I going east? North is that way. South. Oh, I am. It flipped around on me. That's fine. I'll just do this. I still have the margins, so what are they going to do? Nothing is the answer to that question. And boosters. No, that's going... I don't even know what to think anymore. Oh, it's the rotation of Kerbin. That's what was doing it before. That's fine. Okay, we can still get there. We can still get there, ladies and gentlemen. And the solid fuel just ran out. Drop those. <coughs> okay. I'm power on in this direction.
There we go. This is the most intense science I've ever done. Some really just high quality good work. Drop that stage. Alright, yeah, we're going to make this. Despite my uh, terrible inefficiencies in the beginning, I mean, that's really what this whole thing is about, is doing lots of science. Oh, here's some interesting things. How much materials research have I done in low carbon? Not much. So I'm going to go ahead and just start doing that. Do goo have I done? Probably a lot. I suspect quite a bit. Yeah. Alright, what about uh temperature? Okay, it's not worth very much. Unsurprisingly, it's not worth very much. about stage into more rockets. All right. Let's see where we are in the grand scheme of things here. We're getting there. We're getting there quite well. All right. And stop. That ought to be good. All right, let's do a little bit more science while we're up here. Why not? Why not? Why not? <clears throat> A little bit more in space. Just squeaking out that little bit of science that I need to do the next mission. It's fine, guys. There's nothing crazy about this whatsoever. Can I get temperature data in space? Yes, I can. Can I get pressure data in space? No. No, no, no. Only where there is pressure. I suppose that makes sense. Hello. Where are you? Oh, a little chunk of debris from the transport cuddle. Interesting. Well, let's go ahead and speed this trip up. I'm starting to overshoot the desert, so I'm actually going to burn retrograde. I do believe that I actually have enough Delta V in this rocket to succeed in my task of burning all the way into the opposite direction. I've got a couple hundred meters per second of falling, so I should be able to get several hundred meters per second in that direction. Yep, yes I am. All right. Back into the desert we go. That stage is gone. Where are we going to fall? Ladies and gentlemen, right into the center of the desert, which is exactly where I wanted to be. All right, see, that is how you can... An another example of beautiful ways to do things inefficiently is... Uh, <coughs> Just go ahead and take something, a ship that has made it to Duna and only make it about a quarter of the way around the planet to get that little bit of data that you need because, you know, you're just sitting there going, ah, this isn't a serious mission. I just need some science. That's all I need, just a little bit. 
not a big deal. Right, right. All right. Once I feel comfortable that I'm actually concretely over a desert here. Goodbye. I don't hate you. Alright, there's some shock heating. I think it's time for the parachutes. Yes, indeedy. Slow us down quite a bit. Probably drop the landing gear. Wouldn't be a bad thing. Certainly couldn't be. Speed up a bit. Four should be substantial. I shouldn't rip apart. But just to be safe. Maybe at this speed we're just gonna go ahead and just gonna go ahead and wait for him just in case. If I'm time accelerating and this mission dies, it would be very, very sad. <coughs> Come on, pop. Pop open so I can do the rest of the stuff and do my science. There we are, okay. Time acceleration once again, leading to the ground. There's our shadow. Three point four meters per second through Kerbin's atmosphere. That's pretty impressive. All right, and three, two, one. Touchdown. That was farther away than I thought. One. Beautiful. Right on time. All right. Ah, do a little bit of research. Not going to do too much. Just, oh my gosh, it's almost nothing from that. Oh, it's even less from that. Oh god, it's worthless. Oh god, all right. Transmit one round of all of those. I'm just going to log them all again. Let's keep. Observe the materials bay. Observe the mystery goo. Observe the mystery goo. I'm going to go ahead and recover the vessel and see if we got enough science to get that last little bit. How much did I get by forcing the issue? 16! Just enough! Oh god. Oh no, 16 was recovered, but I had I had sent a lot more over, so everything was good. Alright. We wanted this one. We buy this one. And there we go. Oh, what's this? Oh, better probes! I'm sure I'll get those in the future. What's this? Oh, the ion engine. Very, very good for deep space probes. So if I was going to go do some science about a planet, for instance, this would be a good way to get there. Um, but regardless, I've done everything that I needed to do, and a little bit more, just a little rush job. So uh, thank you all for watching. Please like, favorite, subscribe, do all your social media things. We'll see you next time for hopefully a little bit more, a little bit more intensive um, episode of Casa.